So at the end of the last video, I gave you this great speech about how amazing Tooth Complement is and how it solves all of our problems. But of course, as is the case in most of these design principles, the success comes with some limitations and there are some trade-offs. And one of the big limitations of Tooth Complement representations is a concept called overflow. Overflow happens when the result of an operation doesn't fit in the size of the representation. Now you might think you've already seen this with carry out, right? You can add numbers together. And if the carry out at the top of the representation is too big, well then, you know, we just have an extra bit and that's no problem. But we can't just have an extra bit in two's complement because then the number that corresponds to our negative place value is gonna be in a different place. And that'll be weird. So what we wanna do is we wanna look at the cases where adding two numbers together doesn't give us the correct result because you'll see that happening in a few places and then try to identify where that happens and account for it. So here's an example of adding two positive numbers together that we expect to get a positive number because adding two positive numbers together always gives you a positive number. But in our two's complement representation, we get what looks like a negative number. Let me show you what I mean. Here's 50 plus 21. 0 plus 1 is 1, 1, 1, 0, 0. 1 and 1 is 0, carry the 1. 1 and 1 is 0, carry the 1. And we get a 1 in this negative 2 to the 6 column. And if we look at this representation, this number will appear to be negative 57, right? Because 2 to the 6 is 64. Negative 64 minus 7 is uh, negative 57. Or, sorry, negative 64 plus 7 is negative 57. It shouldn't be negative 57. It should be positive 71. But positive 71 is not a number that can exist in a 7-bit 2's complement representation because 64 has to be a negative number. That's what this negative place value means. And so 71 won't fit. There's no way we can put it into the representation. If we try to do an operation that results in a number like that, we get an erroneous result. But how do we detect that result? That's the real challenge. We call this arithmetic overflow. It's not carry out because we're not even carrying any number out of this representation. Uh, but it does happen in consultation with carry out, as you'll see. So we have a different name for this. We call this overflow and we're gonna see how this works. Here's another example, minus 50, or sorry, negative 50, minus 21. We expect it to get negative 71. Well, let's look at what happens. Minus, or negative 50, and then we're subtracting 21, so we're adding, we're sub uh, we're adding negative 21. 0 plus 1 is 1. 1 plus 1 is 0. Carry the 1. 1 and 1 is 0. 1 and 1 and 1. Oh, sorry, 0 carry the 1. 1 and 1 and 1 is 1. Carry the 1. This now just becomes 1. 0 plus 1 is 1. 1 plus 1 is 0. Carry the 1. Now the result here is that the two negatives in that top bit position add together to produce what appears to be the absence of negative value in that bit position. We've carried that negative value out to another column, but we have no idea what happens out past that negative number. There isn't anything out past that negative column. So this is gonna give us a problem as well. We added two negative numbers together and we expected a negative result, but we got a positive result. This is exactly the opposite situation as when we add two positive numbers together and get a negative result. So we've carried out of this negative number into some further column, which we have no idea what that would mean. And that's where our problems happen. If we look at all of the cases when overflow happens, in fact, these are the two sort of representative cases when overflow happens. If we add two positive numbers together and get a negative number, or if we add two negative numbers together and get a positive number, that's when overflow happens. But we can identify that before it even happens by looking at the carry in this top column. If we are carrying into this top column, then there may be a problem because it doesn't make sense to carry a positive number into a column that ostensibly has negative place value. And that's what happened here. We carry into this column uh, and we get a negative place value, which is a problem. Same thing here, we're carrying out of a negative value and we get something weird happening. But if we have numbers that carry in, but also carry out, then it's gonna work out okay because the value that we carry in is gonna be canceled out by the weird weirdness of the negative value that we end up carrying out. Uh, in the same way, 
if we don't have numbers that are anywhere near that um, negative place value, then it'll be fine as well. If there's no carry in, no carry out, that negative place value doesn't even enter into it. And so our result will be the same. So all we have to do is look at the carry in and the carry out and look at those two happening together and say, if they are different, it's a problem. If they are the same, it's okay. So we add, we have a gate that can do that, right? The exclusive OR gate can do that. It looks at the carry into and the carry out of that top bit, whatever that happens to be in our representation, and says, if they're different, that's a problem. And we're going to raise a flag. Remember when we talked about arithmetic logic units, we had this idea of flags. We're going to raise a flag and we're going to say, there was an overflow. Something went wrong. This value should not be trusted. If they are the same, in other words, if we carry in and carry out, or if we don't carry in and don't carry out, then we don't raise a flag. We can trust the result of our number that we got. So that is our overflow. And that gives us some indication that we might be interested in changing the size of our representation, should that be a thing that we are permitted to do in our logic, right? If it looks like we can't fit our representation, fit the number into our representation, we might want to make it bigger. Well, how do we make our representation bigger? We can't just add more negative value onto the front of it, but it turns out that we can. Because if we take a number here, for example, that is a four bit two's complement representation, this has a negative two to the three and positive all the way down to two to the zero. If we want to add another bit to that representation, we can make the five bit representation negative two to the four and then two to the three is positive, right? So how do we get from here to here? Well, as it turns out, all we have to do is, is extend the representation by adding three and subtracting two to the four. When we add two to the three, we actually add it twice because negative two to the three to get to positive two to the three, we have to add it twice. And twice two to the three is two to the four. And so if we add two to the three twice, and then we subtract two to the four, the value will be the same. This is another really clever feature of two's complement is that it's very easy to extend the size of the representation should we need to. We call this sign extension. And what we do is we take the current value of the sign and we just duplicate it. If there's zeros, everything's fine, right? Because adding zeros to a positive number, we know already that that doesn't change the value of the positive number. So if the value of the number is, let's say the value of the number is um, positive two. Let's do positive one. Uh, that's the easiest number to look at. So positive one in a three-bit representation looks like that. And this equals negative two to the two plus two to the one, plus two to the zero, but there's none of this and there's none of this, so all we get is one. Now, what does it look like in four bits? Zero, 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 one. This is negative two to the four, plus two to the three, oh, sorry, negative two to the three, plus two to the two, plus two to the one, plus two to the zero, and again, there's value here, but none here, 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 so this is still positive one. And you can see that we can add any number of zeros to the front of a positive number, and the result will be the same value, which is great because that's already how integers work. You can tack zeros out of the front of it and nothing will change. Well, let's look at negative one. What is negative one? Well, let's look at negative one in base, uh, in a three bit value. How do we find negative one? Well, we'll start with positive one, which we've already got right here. Let's see what happens when we flip the bits and add one. We flip the bits and then add one. So one, one, one equals negative one. And we can confirm that because this is negative four plus two plus one. We add those to all those numbers together and we get negative one. So now let's see what happens if we want to make this value a little bigger. What would be, here's a uh, positive one in four bits, again, flip the bits and add one. And once again, we get one, 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 which again corresponds to negative one. So we can see we can go from three bits to four bits by taking that sign and duplicating it. 
In general, we can say, let's look at what a bit stream, a longer bit stream of ones would be. Here's five ones. Now you might already guess that that equals negative one, which it does. This is one and two and four and eight and negative 16. And if you add all those together, we know that eight and four and two and one is 15. Negative 16 plus 15 equals negative one. Now, what if we want to make this from a five bit representation into a six bit representation? Well, what we have to do is invent a new place value right here. And what we're going to do to fill that place value is we're going to make the 16 place value positive, And we're going to make a new place value negative. So we need negative 32. But we can't just subtract 32. We have to make sure that the value stays the same. So we're going to add 32 again. And that's going to bring our negative 16 to a positive 16. Because negative 16 plus 32 equals positive 16. So we changed negative 32, positive 32. Everything else remains the same. And by doing so, we've added this extra place value by adding a this place value now corresponds to positive 16. It used to correspond to negative 16. So this was adding 32. This one is subtracting 32. And the end result is the same. So the result of this whole idea is that you can take a binary number that is in two's complement signed representation and make it as big as you want just by replicating that sign bit. Every time you make it bigger, you're going to change one bit into a negative and make the one that was negative into a positive, and the result of those two is equivalent. So this is going to give us a concept called sign extension, uh, which is going to be very useful. But keep in mind, this will only work if you actually have a physical location to store this new information. You can't just invent bigger registers. So when we build out our computer, we have to take this into account when we're converting numbers from 8 bits to 16 bits to 32 bits. We're going to want to be able to sign extend that number. And as a consequence, also in this example, we see that all zeros means zero and all ones means negative one, which are good numbers to remember what they are.